Hello and welcome back to Stranded Deep. We are looking at the Cartographer. This is the world we are currently playing on. These are all the islands that we have explored or are yet to explore. And the one in red is the one we're currently sat on in game. I called it Cliff Racer in the editor, but it's actually, uh, it's actually the island with a river that cuts it in half. Now, our home island is there. That's the home world. The old home island is, is there. So these ones along the bottom of the map, most of these are actually ones that were added by the game itself. Some of them we've made. New New York was the first island we made. The Sea Stack Island is Sea Stack. The island with all the sharks on it is Cave World because there is a cave on there with a boat jammed in it. But what we're going to do this episode is just hit create an island. Now, be warned, this might be a very long episode. I am going to be using WSAND to move the, uh, move the mouse, move the camera front, back, left and right. I'm going to use Q and E to move it up and down. And I'm going to be using the right mouse button to pan the camera around. Now we have an island in front of us. It is an island. It has grass, it has sand and it has sea floor. Now what we're going to do immediately is make sure we're on the train tab. We've only got three tabs that cross the top. Terrain and objects are the ones that work. The camera one doesn't seem to do anything at the moment. So we'll hit terrain. We will hit the cog. We will hit display ocean, 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 and we'll get rid of the ocean. This is an island. If you haven't seen it before, if you haven't seen our other videos, the uh, the exploring the map editor and making of the first island, those are the those are the videos you should go to if you want to really see how to use the map editor. This is us making an island for our YouTube YouTube series. I guess it's. Uh, I guess what we're, we're doing here now, as you can see, these things are kind of like giant cakes. They, they sort of protrude from the sea floor and there's not a lot between them, which raises the question, is there even a sea floor between the islands in the game or are they just kind of here like this? Uh, the first button I'm going to hit is actually set height because what we want to do is make all of this area on the outside fairly usable. So I'm going to hit the, well, the size is probably okay. Uh, target value, I'm going to push up a little bit and then I'm going to click. Okay. All right. So it's pushing everything down. I want to move the target value up. And then, so set height. Let's just ramp the amount up as well. All right. That's not that's too much. Let's bring it back. There we go. Let's move the camera down. That's probably okay, actually. So set height um, is a brush like all the other terrain brushes, but it'll pull the, pull the terrain up to a specific height, a value that you set, this bottom value here. Now it's very, very important to note, and this is something that catches me out all the time, is that if we click here, raise and lower height are very, very different. If you just push and click, you'll, you'll keep raising or lowering the terrain, but this amount slider, and the size slider are inherited between all of these tools for some reason. I don't like it, but it's, it's the way it is. So if I were to say, have the world how I liked it, and then accidentally hit raise and click, you might find that you suddenly have a massive mountain because these two have been set um, as you were, as you're playing around the set height. And then you have to kind of flatten everything down again. Oh, it's, it's kind of a bit of a nightmare. Just uh, increase the size of that. There we go. So what we're doing now is just pulling the seabed up because I like the seabed in um, sort of versions. Was it 1.2 or 0.12? I think it was 0.12. Yeah, because we're still on, we're still on version zero, aren't we? So it was 0.12 and it was uh, 0.16, I think, um, when the world was a very different place. The procedurally generated islands were not so procedurally generated and 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 you could see the seabed between the islands. That was really good because you could have things like um, wrecks and stuff between islands, just kind of in the middle of nowhere and sort of hopping off your raft was kind of a viable thing. Now, I think that's a little too low. What we can do is just grab an object, an object, an object of desire specifically a tiger and here we go Boop. hello my friend you are Boo -doo -doo -doo. okay so what i want to do is make this sure this outer area is 
suitable enough for a shark to actually boop, uh, swim around in. Now, both swim around in, and for us to, uh, I mean, if we were to take this guy out, we would be able to get that body out of the sea. Now, that's fine. That looks fine there. Interestingly, huh. I wondered if it took away some of the, the underwater fog, but I think it's just because we're close to the animal itself. All right, fine. Uh, what we're also going to do is grab a shipwreck. So we're going to go to, uh, I think it's structures actually, not items. Structures, shipwreck 3A, right, okay. And I just want to pop it there. If, in terms of depth, that looks okay. So I think the outside of the island is probably, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. So it's deep enough for sharks to swim around in, but it's not too deep. So if we were to harpoon one, we would never be able to find it. It would just drop off into the abyss. Having said that, the abyss is very drop off -y. I mean, it's kind of all the way down there. It is not something we want to be dealing with. So what we're going to do is just hit display ocean again, get rid of that. And we can see now we have to keep turning the ocean on and off because otherwise we just won't know. Um, Kind of scale, I guess. Scale is a big problem in the uh, in the map editor. That's one one big problem we are going to be dealing with. So it looks like, oh no, this is a tiny island. Actually, this is huge. This island is absolutely massive. And what we've done is we've created an, uh, an area on the outside, basically just expanding our play area. Uh, what we're going to do is go back to set height, which is probably my favorite tool at the moment. Um, Leave the amount alone and drop this. Uh, actually, bump this up and then have a whoop, drop that down. I just want to click. And what I want to do is raise some of this sand up. And this is going to look ugly, real ugly. Oh, no, that's actually perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. So I'm going to raise this up. So the amount is cranked up fairly high. It doesn't look like it's fairly high, but there's a lot of action happening as we're brushing things over. So we're going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to brush, 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 brush. And we're going to kind of roughly block in the island. Now, what I might do is do this over a couple of days. Uh, that was the plan originally. And it's still the plan. In fact, it's the plan every time I make one of these islands. The reason for that is you have an idea. You say, well, I've got this really good idea for an island, but I don't know if it's going to work. And then you sort of start putting essentially paint to canvas. I think that's a, a kind of a, a nice way of putting it. And then you uh, you have an idea in your mind's eye, sort of a, a better idea of what the island's going to look like, and you can sleep on it. You can literally sleep on it. You can go to sleep, uh, go to bed, go to work, go to school, college, or whatever. But your subconscious is going to be working on that, and you might think, actually, you know what? It'll be a really good idea if I stuck an island away from the main island. That might be a really good idea. Or if we made it as big as possible, or if we threw a, like a river in here, or if, Oh, I, I really, really like the idea of a lookout or something. That'd be cool. So uh, we have quite a nice large area. We've still got these, these quite vast plains on the outside. So I might just... Uh, no, I, I know what I want to do with this. I know what I want to do with this. So we're going to leave that for the time being. Okay, fine. So we have this kind of huge slightly flat area and it looks rough as anything that's because of lod level of detail since we get closer to it it's going to um, go back into looking a little bit smoother we do have a tool to smooth out the the edge of the coast but yeah if we, the further away we are the more triangular everything looks as the polygon count is uh, is reduced which is what happens in the game normally but in the island edit editor because there's less um because you can see so much more than you would normally in game. It's it's really kind of limited. Okay, so what we're going to do is probably raise up the middle of the island. Now we're going to hit raise and lower. Uh, the amount is going to drop right down. Remembering that that's inherited from all of these other tools. We're going to hit raise. These brushes, so this one here is a feathered brush. It's going to raise more in the middle than it is on the outside. This is a, this is a hard edge brush. This is going to raise equally around the entire area of the brush. We've got other shapes and stuff, but to be honest, yeah, I'm going to use them. So we're just going to start brushing over gentle, like essentially airbrushing the island in. 
and we're going to airbrush all the way to the edge. I might even airbrush into the sea to raise up because there's kind of a very pronounced lip right there at the moment. And I don't really want that. What I want is a nice smooth coast with a nice transition between sea and surf and land, I guess. Sea, surf and land. That actually makes scary amount of sense. Brilliant. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have known that I've been to work all day, come home from work, and now I'm sat on the computer making an island. Which is um considering I use Photoshop at work, not too dissimilar, if I'm going to be honest. So we're just brushing in the land here. Brushing it in, brushing it in, brushing it in. What I could use, and I do know this uh this creator actually has a bunch of shortcut keys. But they're not the same as the Photoshop shortcut keys. I'll tell you that for free. There's no control Z. So like immediate undo. There's no way of just like quickly undoing uh undoing an action. Which is ooh, if you do make a mistake and suddenly punch a hole to the center of the earth, which is totally possible with this amount and size slider, then yeah, you just kind of have to undo it. There's no real way of uh real way of kind of fixing that without really uh really just getting on in there and un messing it up so we'll take the ocean off so this this weird seawall now this is probably good for the sharks if i'm gonna be honest oh that's the other thing weirdly the brush tool remains even when you're on this last tool when you're on the procedural generation tool so it looks like you still brush but you can't because there ain't nothing there there's no instructions going into the in, into the game engine so I'm going to brush around this outside area. There we go. Because what what would happen? Actually, we probably need to smooth that down. Uh, which is this last tool here. There we go. Smooth that back. Smoothing tool is really cool because it's just going to even the terrain all along here. In fact, we probably set the amount a lot higher. It'd be much more aggressive with the smoothing on the outside of the island. There we go. So it's just going to kick it all back, make it nice and smooth. What we don't want is a shelf, because if we have a shelf, what will happen is the raft will just hit it, just slam into it, and then we'll stop. And then we'll be sad, because we'll be out at sea, and we're going to put sharks on the map, and the sharks will be out at sea, and then they'll start hitting the, hitting the old raft, and I'll be like, oh no, the raft is being hit by sharks, so what am I going to do? And then... Everyone knows what we're going to do. We're going to panic and probably have a little freak out. Have a little moment where we all freak out and just kind of, just kind of lose it. So we're using the kind of aggressive settings on the old, and it doesn't even look like much. If I crank it all the way up to to a hundred percent, is that even how? What's that doing? Oh, it's not too too bad. It's not too too bad. If we did that with a height, holy crap! That would actually just slam us into orbit. That would slam a huge spike through the map. It'd be crazy. You would not want to use the amount slider at 100% on the uh, on the old raise and lower. That would be not a good thing to do. And yet, I probably will do it at some point. So we're still just chasing back the uh, chasing back the edge of the island. Kind of important to do. It's kind of annoying, but uh, whatever, whatever. Sports. Uh, I've been I've been listening to a lot of uh, podcasts at work because that's what you do, and uh, I've been listening to a lot of Cox and Crendor because oh my god, it's brilliant sports and Whoppy oh <laughs> oh boy, and the co-optional podcast. So if you uh, if you're in a job that uh, that you really really uh, have time to kind of sit down and and kind of get on with things and you want to listen to some podcasts then i can i can wholly recommend the cox and crandall i can wholly recommend the co-optional podcast what used to be i think the game station podcast with uh, total biscuit and uh, dodger and jesse cox and i can wholly recommend a few other podcasts uh levar burton reads is a new one with uh, levar burton who is geordie laforge from uh from star trek next generation and and myths and legends oh boy if you've never heard the myths and legends podcast you are missing out my friend you are missing out so we're going to hit raise and lower uh, and i'm going to crank this all the way back because this 
this amount slider will will be your downfall and just start bringing this raising this up uh just along here now i don't really want to raise up too much but i because i don't know how the uh, how the sharks are going to deal with the edge of this terrain and that is a big problem with custom i don't know if it's custom made maps actually or just all maps it's uh it's a bit of a problem and the the main thing uh that happens is the sharks will swim along here they'll get to this terrain and they'll be like oh you know what i do not know what i'm doing and then it'll freak out and swim around the island and then we have that that big old crazy problem of sharks being under the island and we're like oh well i guess that's happening again i guess that's happening again uh we're just following the following the outside of the island at the moment this is the bit that's going to take probably most of the time in this initial phase you want to get this right because if you don't get it right it's going to look weird and mm, let's go side on yeah this is really quite deep here it is quite deep let's raise it up so there's a bit of sand there hmm well i mean it's doing something let's turn the water back on and see what's going on yeah yep you can always create little shallow bays and stuff fine fine it doesn't look too bad at, uh for the time being i mean it's terrible but it doesn't look too bad for the time being it's a, it's a start it's a start it's a start uh what we're going to do is carve the island up at this point you see We've moved far away enough from those objects. They've stopped rendering. So there we go. Boop. He stopped rendering. Right. Okay. What I'm going to do is grab another object. I'm going to grab another shipwreck. Boop. And pop that there. Good. That's going to give us a scale. Because like I said, scaling, scaling the map editor is real hard. So if I try and stand... Ugh. The other thing is the closer you are to an object, the slower you go. And then as soon as you're free from geometry, you seem to shoot forward. So this is kind of head height on the island, but it's not really. So we're kind of looking around where we're looking around the island and I'm like, yeah, there's a few things I want to do. There's a few things I want to do. First of all, the rivers are kind of cool. I really do like the rivers. So I was thinking about having a tri river, uh, a tri point river or a tri point waterway uh, through the middle of the terrain. So that for that, we'll hit. Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll use this at high again. We'll have the amount very low and then we'll drop this back a bit and then i think we'll probably follow the edge of this green initially so let's do this let's brush this in we're using well, I always use a soft brush terrain is not hard my friends terrain is not hard you don't see like well you, i suppose you do occasionally see like solid terrain uh in real life that kind of looks cool let's have a look here let's punch that out let's punch it out i think it's gonna be too deep so let's come up by a pixel there's no division option there's no like numerical divisions there's no snap it's kind of missing a lot of things this slider that's better that's better softly 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 there we go we just want the water we don't necessarily want uh want something that's impassable let's do this so we're just kind of following the terrain round along the natural natural edges of things i guess i mean we can always create other natural edges of things it's not not too much of a problem if if we're going to be honest with ourselves we'll uh we'll do this Boop. so we open that up to the sea and i can punch this back yeah yeah it looks all right that's fine and then just kind of open these areas out because you wouldn't necessarily have hard edges when you uh when you're talking about the the open ocean let's soften up the edges there cool that's sand Ooh, actually that's kind of a perfect height so what we can do is use this tool and just put like a little apron of sand around the island yeah that's actually kind of cool oh uh, I, I wish see i wish we had the, the like numerical dividers with snap and these uh these boxes were just slightly bigger so we can create this kind of this kind of uh apron around the island sandy apron Whoa. trouble is when you get the camera too low or too high because it's, it's great when it's sort of looking left and right but as soon as you get to a point where it's almost straight down and you try and look left and right it just kind of spins on its axis 
That is a problem for like uh, FPV or first person cameras. So first person, first person views, or in fact, any point, uh, any game where you have um, like a camera sort of vertical and yeah, it's the vertical axis that gets messed up, which is why when you have like a mod, say uh, there was a Star Wars mod for, it was, I think it was Battlefield 1942. We're talking a long time ago, long time ago, uh, before the battle. Was it before Battlefront? Oh, God. I think it was before Battlefront. And basically, uh, basically they, they had, um, I think they had a bunch of like space maps, spaceship maps, which were kind of cool. And the spaceship maps had things like, um, they have Star Destroyers. Yeah, they had Star Destroyers. And Star Destroyers, and they had, I think, a, a Corellian Corvette. But you could actually fly X Wings, you could fly TIE Fighters in essentially what was a, a game that was initially, that initially came out as a first person shooter, which was a bit of a problem because when you flew your X Wing or TIE Fighter too, too uh, high vertically, um, too high or in fact too low, then the camera would get a bit strange. So it's less uh, less airplane sim and more submarine sim. I think people called it at the time, which is you know, it tends to tends to happen when you have that kind of sim right or oh, mod. I think the mod mod is what we're talking about. The trouble is I'm I'm kind of half talking and half looking at what I'm doing and getting none of it done none of it done efficiently. So we're we're putting this sort of sandy apron in. It's just, yeah. So when we're st stood on the shore, we'll see the shark swimming around. And the shark can be like, oh no, I'm a shark. But uh, the, the raft will be able to sort of go over this sandy lip. I think that's going to be deep enough. Yeah, it's going to be deep enough. So it's also the same depth as the river. Brilliant. So instead of, because um, I like that depth, but instead of like using this and then going and doing something else and coming back to it, what we'll do is we'll... Uh, We'll keep the setting and then just punch in the rivers as is. Now, what I want to do is probably punch it in here. Yeah. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Or at least it doesn't. It looks like ass. So let's be honest with ourselves. It looks like nothing to begin with, but then it'll become something momentarily. Now, like I said, this is going to take a long time. And I thought about doing this as a live stream. And I thought, well, no, because it's going to take so long. And it really does need to be done over several days. I thought about breaking the video up and then I thought, eh, you know what? You know what? You know what? Don't, don't really want to break the video up. Don't want to break the video up. Because it just doesn't feel right. Does not feel right. So we're going to punch this in here. Just knock this back a bit. Trouble is with using the brush so far away from the camera is, is the terrain is not quite not not rendering quite right so until you get close and all these little triangles pop out now i know that there's still triangles and stuff under the water uh, i know everything's a little bit low poly i know we need to go with a smoothing brush but we don't have time because otherwise you guys are going to be like i'm so bored what are you doing i want you to do something else oh i want it now <laughs> oh daddy i want it now uh there is only one charlie in the chocolate factory film I wish they made another one, a lot, sort of a more up-to-date Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. But they never did. They, ne they never made a terrible film with, um, uh, with Jude Law and um, David Bellamy. Yeah, that, that actually that would have been quite interesting. David Bellamy was a TV presenter. I don't see him do much these days, but he was a TV presenter and he did a lot of... Oh God, what do you do? Uh, nature documentaries, mostly for kids and stuff. Very, like, really, one of those people is really interesting to listen to. One of those people is really interesting to listen to. Okay, so we're going to start putting items in. I'm going to grab a rock. Rockety rock. No, we're not. That's on items. We want rocks. Cool. And it's going to be cliff six. Why is it going to be cliff six? Oh, you always use cliff six. I know everyone always uses cliff six because it's a huge cliff. And you can do blocking with it. But what is what is blocking? I do not understand. Okay, right. All right. All right. All right. All right. 
blocking is basically what we're doing at the moment. So we're, we're putting in an island. Uh, we've got this kind of cool, cool uh, tri-river uh, island thing going on. We might make this bigger, I don't know. But we've just basically brushed in these areas. And now we're going to throw in some, some objects or some extra geometry. And we don't want to be messing around because we don't have a million years or probably the processor. Um, I'd say not processor speed, but I, th I think there might be an item limit to the world. There definitely is for things like pine trees. So you can't create an entire pine forest. Camera's a little bit tricky. We're going to rotate this. And yeah, that's fine. So I drop this down into C. Move it back a bit. Cool. Rotate. Nah. And then we're going to grab another one. So we just grab, grab and rotate and move using these toggles. In fact, if we rotate that all the way around, there we go. We got the old toggle facing the other way. I know the geometry is different, but a hey, must be the money. I mean, a hey, whatever. OK, cool. I'm going to rotate that out a little bit. Move that down, pop that in a little bit. There we go. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And another one. Another one here. It's here. This way, this time, I'm going to rotate it the opposite way. Oh, it's that way. Yeah. OK. So we're going to deliberately have it the opposite way so that we don't get too much of a pattern repeat because this sort of sticks out. This doesn't. And uh, this doesn't. But we're kind of positioning them slightly differently. We're also going to rotate it this way and we're going to jam it into the island mesh. Oh, what do you mean island mesh? I mean, this thing is basically just a, it's almost like a 2D layer. If I poke my face through, this might go very bad. Oh, this won't go badly. It'll go, oh, there we go. No, no, no. Oh. There we go. Island mesh. So the island is literally kind of this uh, very thin, uh, very thin mesh above well, water, the water carries on under the island. And you might say, oh, is that how sharks swim under the island? My friends, sharks don't swim. They just kind of uh, no clip around on the water if I'm going to be truthful about that. All right, so we're going to probably rotate this a little bit more, drop it down a little bit more. You just want to, we want a rough kind of line that follows all the way to the edge. There we go. There we go. And now we can uh, pull something in. We've got to be a little bit careful because if I was to, if I was to say, oh, I'm going to rotate this, but I'm and have this uh, this option on, what I might accident accidentally do is rotate something halfway across the map because the wrong item is selected. I've done that quite a few times, quite a few times, many many times, and it is somewhat frustrating. So if you are placing a lot of identical objects down, you do use the rotate option. I believe it's similar to, what's that other engine? Oh, wait, it's this engine. It's Unity. Yeah, you see a lot of those kind of, uh, Jim Sterling does them, a lot of real cheap Unity um, games where they grab a load of assets and they're like, oh, I'm going to grab a load of assets, but um, you know what? I, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'll just put all these things and they're facing the same way, no? And then they're, face they're all facing the same way and it, it kind of looks a little bit like, Bum, I'm going to be honest. Right, so that's kind of quite high, but I want to make sure there is no way to see, because these things are actually open on the bottom. And I don't, don't really know why the, uh, the model's open on the bottom. I don't want to see any gaps. It might be that we never, never come to this part of the island in the, uh, in the video, but I just don't want to see any gaps. Um, so that's kind of cool. And I like the way that's, Purely by accident, purely by having that kind of uh, just placing it down, and it, it looks oh, it looks kind of cool the way it was. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it. Don't we don't need to move that? Drop this down a little bit, rotate it a little bit. There we go, done. So we're just throwing in some cliffs, and the cliffs really nicely mesh in with each other. The other interesting thing is that the sides of the cliffs they're all clean. That's all rock there. The top of the cliff is this sort of scree with a bit of grass on it. But let's put our cliff over here. If we then rotate this round. Hey, look. Now the side of the cliff has a load of scree with dirt on it. 
and the top is well fairly clean yeah a lot of these have like dynamic texturing yeah, it's a really cool really cool i'm going to delete that object cool so the other thing we uh what the other thing we're going to do we're not going to do any other thing there's more other things no we're just going to continue continue this cliff line not with that we're not no okay fine uh, we are going to raise up this area though that's something i want to do that's a little too high i'm going to ah, that's better it's better it's still big i mean it's still real big if we're standing here we'd be like oh no how did we climb up that but that's fine that's fine um the other thing we're going to do is go back to terrain now if you have these areas and you're like hey i've built this thing out of rocks and it's kind of cool but uh, I really want to have like grass and stuff behind it. Fine. Uh, we'll go back to raising our height. We'll click this hard edge brush here. We'll drop the size down. And in fact, we won't go to raise and lower height. We're going to go to set height because that's always, that's pretty much our go-to girl for most of these things. We're going to use raise and lower in a moment. Uh, we're going to leave the amount quite far down. And we're going to crank this up a bit, just by a few pixels. And then we're going to see just how how high this goes. All right, a little too high, I think. So we'll drop the target value down by two pixels. Ugh, I really wish I hadn't. I hadn't. I didn't need to use like a couple of pixels. Move it down by a couple of pixels. See, it's uh, is that right? Yeah, I think that will work to begin with. Anyway, okay, let's just fill this area in. And grab the amount and just crank it up a bit. There we go. So what's that? What that's going to do is going to fill this area behind the cliff with dirt, and because the cliffs are essentially, well, they're not really there; they're hollow. Let's poke, poke our face in, see if we can actually get close. There we go. So you can see what's going on inside the cliff. This area is raised up. This, the the uh, the texture is very stretched, but it's actually hidden by the cliff. So we get the top of this, that like dirt area, and it fills in all the nice all the gaps nicely. There we go. But we don't see that sort of stretched texture on the outside. See? We just get that little little bit of sand as if it's kind of built up over time. Nice. Brilliant. Fine. So we're gonna have that there, kind of fill this area in, just making sure we don't we don't go too far into uh, into these cliffs with this brush. And yeah, that is. That's looking nice. It's feeling nice. It's looking like butt still. It's not going to look nice until we tart. And still, and still we tart. And still we tart. Um. Hmm. Yeah. This is the. This is the old. Oh, hang on a minute. I've got the amount cranked up a little bit too high of the raisin lower height. Mm. Got the wrong brush as well. Got a hard edge brush. So let's hit lower. Let's push this down a bit. We can always use smoothing on the edge, actually. Uh, yep, yeah, doesn't matter too much. So let's raise this area up. So the amount is quite low. We'll have to smooth this edge off anyway. So let's just allow that to fill itself in. Just holding down left mouse button and brushing around. Cool, 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 cool. Let's hit smooth. Let's crank the amount up a lot. And just fat, change the size out. There we go. There we go. Don't mind it as long as it's not touching the not touching the cliffs. And let's go smooth it down into a nice hillside. <gasps> ah, it's a little little too steep. Uh, we can always raise and lower, remembering to crank that all the way back, and then just whoop. Ah, there we go. Raise this area up. Nice. So we've got some hills. Fill that area in. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And then smooth it all off by cranking that amount back. Oh, that's not the smooth. I clicked and it missed. Oh, well. Oh, well. Like I said, uh, that happens a lot. That will happen a lot. And there's no undo. You just have to kind of live with your mistakes. So let's raise and lower. Crank that down, lower that down. Ugh, it's just kind of flatten off. All these little mistakes eventually just kind of build into the fabric of your island anyway so it's not really a problem we just want this this area not so not so harsh slope we're not we're not building a uh, an iron age 
uh, fortification here. We're not building an, a hill fort, of which there are many in the UK. Many, many, many. I don't know of any in... Are there any in America? I know there's a lot of archaeology that people have said, oh, North America ain't got no archaeology. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it does. you got dinosaurs. I mean, that's a thing. Um, okay, cool. So we've, we've created this area. We've, we kind of blocked it in a bit. Um, there's some dirt behind it and there's some cliffs. Fine. They're all kind of like cliffy cliffs at the moment. And it's like, oh, well... Oh, what are we doing here? Well, we need some other cliffs on the other side. It's cliff six. Cliff six? Yeah, because it's big and it allows us to do a lot of stuff all at once. Cool. Oh, what are you doing? Are you building a building a bit of a bit of a cavern? A bit of a bit of a canyon, maybe? Yeah, maybe. 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 Just making some interest, basically. So um, what you do is you, you make some interest on the island because you might be here for several episodes if you're doing a YouTube series or you might just be making yourself a home island and you, you don't want it to be boring. You want it to be interesting. I'm going to drop that down on this side so it's not, not quite as high. We do want it to sort of disappear into the ground. But also if it follows the, uh, follows the kind of terrain on the other side, then it's... It looks a bit more natural. Let's bump that in, out, and down a little bit. Ah, cool, cool. Yeah, that's all right. It's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. And we can just drag this round, uh, twist it, and then drop it in. And we don't need to angle it on this side. It doesn't need to be perfectly the same. We'll drop it down so the, the top's just kind of showing through. Just raise it up a little bit. Don't want too much like spiky geometry throughout showing through the bottom of the world of the world. Ah, okay. So bearing in mind all of this is still poking through the actual bottom of the map. Like if we were to if we were to look underneath, if we were to be a shark and we'd be like, oh, you know what I'm a shark. Then yeah, you would actually see all this um kind of glaring, glaring the obvious stuff sort of just being there, I guess. We'll do the same for this side. Drop it down a bit, down into the dirt. Leave it at that, that sort of odd angle so this rocks are poking up. So it's the same rocks. It looks like there's a continuation of stuff underground, which technically there is, but it's kind of like the same rock formations, I guess. So it goes kind of cool and somewhat huge rock formations. The only problem is that these are subject to LOD, uh, level of detail, which the terrain is. But for these objects that we place, they will disappear. Now it's it's kind of harsh in the uh, in the map editor when you are out here on a raft. It's not going to be too bad, but if you're looking at this island from another island, say sort of over there or something, then you're not going to see any of these rocks or these shipwrecks or anything. So that's going to be a bit of a bit of an issue if you if you want that to look pretty from afar. Now we don't necessarily need that to look pretty from afar. Uh, things, things we need. Ooh, you're still down there, buddy. You're still down there, buddy. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, I like them when they're like this. Not moving, I'm trying to eat our face off. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Right, so this area here, um, not entirely sure what I want to do with this area. It's got a huge, huge old beach. You've got this area here, which we can do something with. Uh, do we want another set of rocks or something here? Do we? That's the question. Because at the moment we've got this kind of grey rock. And we've got this over here, which is also grey rock. So if we put more grey rock here, it's going to just look like eh, a lot of grey rock. Hmm. What I might do is hit up terrain. Uh, hit up set height. And just kind of... And it's just trying to find uh, where it goes back down. So that height is going up. We're going the wrong way. There we go. There we go. Uh, change the brush size down. It's going to push it down a bit. The amount is real low. But at the moment we've got this kind of rampart, this parapet. I don't know. It's kind of seawall thing going on. Let's change the size up. There we go. There we go. Brush it all back a bit. 
Now, how far down is that going to go? In theory, we could. I think it's, oh, yep, it's actually matched it. Brilliant. Brilliant. So we'll open this area out. We can even, because it's such a low amount, we can even just use this brush to push this stuff down. Cool. Yeah, that's, that's nice. And then we'll push it in here as well. So you just want to open up this waterway along this area because it doesn't make too much sense for it to be too narrow along there. It's, narrow, it's very narrow there. Uh, we'll just open this up and it can be wider along here. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right, cool. So we've opened this area up a bit. Now, the, one of the other objects that we can use is all the way up here. Items. Oh, is it an item or is it a structure? No, it's going to be a structure. Fine. So we'll go to structures. <gasps> we will go to Seafort Bridge Broken. Yay! Whoa, where are you going? There you go. There you go. This old chestnut. Yeah. So you're like, whoa. Uh, hang on a minute. It looks a bit weird. Yeah, it does actually. It looks real, real weird. The reason for that is it's kind of... Let's poke that into terrain. So we don't want it sort of showing the other side of the terrain, which it does there. I mean, it could show a little bit. It could show a little bit. Um, we, we could just put a bridge here. We could just straight put a bridge, but I don't want to put a bridge there because if we're going to make sort of stuff like this, we, we do want a certain amount of interest, I guess you could call it. Um, if we raise this up, how how high can we get this without it poking through? Eee, okay, that's going to be a little bit of an issue. We could raise the terrain up. I don't want to do that necessarily. Uh, no, I don't want to do that. What, this one, that's is that going to do it? No, don't want to do that either. Huh. Well, well, well. So the only thing we can do is just drop it down by a few pixels. Boop. And there we go. Done. Done and done. Right. So this side, we need it to anchor on something. So we've got this cool like, bridge thing. That's brilliant. But we don't want it to have a load of like cliffs and stuff here. We, but we still need something for it to sit on. So we're going to hit rocks anyway. And we're going to find one of the rock stacks. Cliff 2. Is that? Whoa. You're enormous, my friend. Probably a little bit too big. Uh, yeah, way too big. Way, way too big. These are useful for other things, but not that. Let's get rid of that. Um, cliff one. Oh, yeah, that's okay. So we'll just drop that down. We drop that down through. Yeah. There we go. Ah. Ah. Ah, that looks lovely. All right, brilliant. That's actually perfect the way it is, but. This kind of looks a little bit odd, very odd, most odd. Go back to go back to structures and then grab our C4 bridge. Wait, what? 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 Oh, yeah. We can't just leave it the way it is. Uh, what we need to do is need to rotate this. <gasps> yeah. You can kind of see what we're going to be doing with this. We are going to be using it as a piece of structure. Now, if there's other objects in the way of something you're moving, as soon as you click, you might actually click on the other object. So you make sure you've clicked on the right object and then click on the toggle and make sure it's yellow before you start moving because you might actually accidentally move something that is kind of critical to you. Uh, that is the one wrong way round. But what we can do is move this like this. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. And then jam that. Now, is that the wrong way round for us? No. No. We're going to slam that down. Down, down, deeper and down. Make sure the blue is highlighted. Fine. And then grab the green. Okay. And now it's oh, it just jumped to something else. I saw that. Let's grab that. Move that up a little bit. Green and down. Whoop. And again, it jumped to another object. So green. Ah, now that's red. Ah keeps jumping to other objects because there's so many objects here, right? Grab the rotation options, hit the blue, rotate that slightly. And you might be thinking, have you used this before? Yeah, I did actually. I used this. Now I want to click on this object. 
It's the wrong object. There we go. Um, yeah, I did. I used this on the other island. The other island that we've been to had exactly the same mechanism for keeping the bridge, kind of making the bridge look like it was anchored to something. So let's click on, oh, can I click on the actual object? Yeah, there we go. Let's move it over by a pixel. It's not, yeah, it's going to be perfect. I'm going to clone that. No, I'm not. I'm going to clone the wrong thing. It's going to delete that. Boop. Because that was the last thing I, I clicked on. Yeah, I click on that. Clone that. Fine. Grab that. Move it out so it's easier to get hold of. And then use the rotation option to rotate that um, around. And then use red to bring it around. Switch over. Grab green. Done. Done. And done. And then grab blue and just slam it back into the earth from whence it came. And then move it slightly. And then probably give it a little rotation. A little bit of rotation. Just on green. Just to get rid of that kind of... There we are, it's level now. Grab red. And then blue, just pull it back into the earth a little bit. There we go. So now we've got a broken bridge with these kind of supports made from other items in the game. They're not clipping through and they've got a bit of interest. Now you might say, oh, hang on a minute. There's no, there's no mesh. What's going on? Well, that's not rendered until you actually get into the game. So it's a low poly version of the bridge until you get into the game. But the trouble is, because this is above the height of the grass, for some reason, it gets treated like uh, like any other surface, like a grass surface. So I'll just put grass uh, sprites along there, which is a bit of a problem. It's a bit of a pain in the butt, something I don't really like. Uh, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is put another bridge here. So let's grab that. Uh, wah. It's still a broken bridge, because why not? It creates some interest. Also, if we mess a jump up, then we will end up in the middle of the water and we have to swim for it. Which, given our current disposition, or given any disposition, um, for not wanting to be in the water at any given moment, is humorous, to say the least. All right, there we go. So that kind of pokes into the terrain there. Just make sure we can actually access it. So there's a gap through there. That's fine. Uh, and obviously we can access it from the top there. Right, okay. So as long as we can access this stuff, we don't position something that when we say to ourselves, yeah, we're going to use it, and then we can't actually get to it. We can always put little rocks and stuff there to make it easier to access. Right, okay, so we've got these two bridges so far, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do actually, click on that, uh, clone it, Use green to pull it up out of the world. There we go. And then oh, immediately, because there's so many objects in this area, this keeps uh, like locking onto something else. We'll use the rotation toggles. Move this guy around. It's blue. And again, making sure we're actually clicked on and actually have like um, this thing turn yellow. So we are actually moving the right object. Now, this was upside down. Down a little bit upside down, a little bit upside down, so we can rotate that. There we go. Was it upside down? <gasps> oh, I don't know. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. So I had it the right way round. Ah, no, it's not a problem. No problem. Just flip it, flip it round. Okay, fine. Uh, and then we'll grab this and toggle it back. Ah, uh, uh, oh. there's only a limited amount of distance we can go before the mouse kind of stops. So we'll drag that and pop that in. Is that, is that perfect? Is that perfect? We can use shift at this point to move ourselves. It's because we're so close. The camera's moving so slow because we're so close to uh, objects. Ugh, we move ourselves up a bit. We're going to free ourselves of that object. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not perfect, but it's not, not the worst thing in the world. Right. And we can't see it. It's literally... Just the very tip of this uh, this item. Um, if I clone that, 
No, that's the wrong thing. All right, let's delete that. Like I said, it keeps keeps snapping to other objects. I'm not sure why it wants to do that. Don't know. Uh, so we'll rotate this, and we will rotate it on its green axis. No, that ain't going to do anything. That's going to spin it around. Rotate on the red axis. There we go. And then just move it over. <gasps> oh, we're making making some bridges. But why are you spending so long on the tiny little details? That's the tiny little details, the things that nobody sees, kind of make it really. It's uh, it's all about the deets, all about the deets. So we've gone from like blocking the world in to uh, just uh, focusing on certain little items, I guess. And it initially it won't make any sense. It's like, well, why, why, why bother? Ah, good question. Excellent question. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. All right. Good. Um, because these are going to be points of interest. So as points of interest, you want to get this sort of stuff in first. So it's kind of, yeah. And we can see down there, we can't really see through there. So that's, that's, I mean, we can stand on this rock and go, oh, this is lovely. Put some trees and stuff around here. And it's going to look well nice. Uh, that is different from that. So it's all... Yeah, it's all coming together. It's all coming together. It looks like not much at the moment. And we have actually, oh God, we have been recording for a while. I might split these up into different episodes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still yet to decide. Um, yeah, I might have to split these up into separate episodes. Otherwise, otherwise these, these things are going to be just too long. Not, not because I want that sweet, sweet YouTube ad revenue, which by the way, we don't get. I don't think anyone gets these days. Uh, but simply just to make it more manageable on you guys, the viewer. So you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to leave uh, leave you here. When we come back, we will we'll continue. We'll continue where we left off. But all the hard bits done. The hard bits done. The island is now kind of taking shape. We've got these three large areas that we can do stuff with. We've got uh, points of interest, and we've got the sea. And this lovely sort of apron area, which we can use to like hunt sharks and uh, put some other points of interest in. I have an idea for what we can do with the sea that we haven't already done in the series. So uh, we why don't we just go and save this? So we, what we're going to do is hit save, and we're going to we're going to give it a name. What should we call it? Uh, Deep blue, blue, not French. Blue C. There we go. And an island. I can't really type around my microphone. Um, an island with three rivers and sharks. Well, it's actually really one river and sharks, but we get we get the idea. So we'll call it DPC. Fine. And just resume on that. So cool, 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 cool. I'm going to leave you here. So if you're liking this, uh, make sure to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel because that always helps us out. And if you are subscribed and you're like, oh, I'm not getting any notifications, try and find a bell and click it because apparently that does stuff. And you know what? I will catch you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>